Hello, my name is Paul Fritz, and this is my class on preparing Mixamo characters for use for animation in Maya. So, Mixamo, that's what we're going to talk about today. And Mixamo is a site from Adobe. Uh, they have free characters and free motion capture animation that you can download and use on characters. And you can download it straight into things like Motion Builder and some other software. And you can also use the characters inside of Maya. Now, there are some things about this character. Since they have gone in and Mixamo has gone in and made it so that you can upload characters and send them to Arrow and other things like that, there used to be a rig system that made it pretty easy to rig it in Maya. It was a plugin that seems to no longer be available on their website. And instead, uh, you can just upload it, immediately download it, and you can use the Maya Auto Rigger to rig this character. But that rig uh, falls a little bit short with some of the things I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and use the old Mixamo Auto Rig, uh, Auto Control Rigger, and show you where you can find it and how to apply it to a character. And then we're going to take this character and we're going to fix some of the animation. So basically, you just kind of go through here, find a character that you're interested in, and download it so you can select it. And it'll take a second to load it in there. And Leonard seems to be having some issues for me. And maybe it's the website. But anyway, so you can kind of come in here. You can see all the different uh, aspects of that character. You can even find some animations for that character. Give them um, something, some animation, and there you go. You can kind of apply it, and you can even download them with that. But uh, what we're going to do instead is uh, we're not going to use this animation. You can just click that off. And what I want to do instead is use that character I had up here a second ago. So that was Sophie. And the reason is I am going to use her for a running uh, tutorial. So I'm going to show an animation on how to set up a run cycle. And this character is already kind of set up with tennis shoes, kind of a little bit more of a running outfit, maybe. Uh, although she does have some jeans type shorts on instead, but I think they'll be okay. And I'm not going to use any animation. So what you're going to do is to get the character, you're going to download it. And you want to use the character in a T-pose. And we want to do the FBX format. So basically the default settings. You can come in here and you can see that you can download it for some other software uses. And if you pick the original pose, that would be this pose that they're standing in as their demo here. Just keep it as a T pose. And then you would hit download. And the character within download, you'll find in your downloads most likely. And pull it over into a file that you're going to work with. In this case, I already have downloaded her. She's here. And um, file size here. So, and I put it in a folder for my animation demos. And what I'm going to do is inside this, I'll create a project folder inside of Maya, import that particular character, and we'll go from there. So let me go ahead and first, um, we're going to go ahead and bring up Maya. And I'm going to close out this particular program. And what we're going to talk about next is this, the Mixamo Auto Control Rig. This is a Dropbox that is currently in. It's not my Dropbox. This is a Dropbox where I was able to find this Mixamo Auto Control Rig. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and download this into my folders. And then I'll show you from there how to uh, put this plugin into Maya so that we can use it. So right here, if you click on the little down arrow, say direct download, and it'll give you a choice of where you want to save it. And you can go ahead and do that. I've already uh, downloaded this. So once you hit uh, save file, it'll download and then it'll be a zip folder that you'll have to unzip. Once you unzip it, make sure you keep track of where you put it. And what I'm going to do then is take it and put it on a, uh, on my desktop somewhere where I can find it. In this case, I created a folder called Mixamo Rigs. Here's the download. Again, you can put it in a folder and you can just right click on it. And use your favorite uh, unzip or 7-zip or whatever you want to do to extract it. And once you do that, then you'll get these folders with the exception of this 
Word document. This is uh, the actual location of that Dropbox. Okay, so you'll end up with this folder here on top, the Maya Auto Control Rig. You'll end up with this image, which is the image for the Mixamo button that we're going to use. And you'll end up with this, which is a Python script that tells Maya where to go find this file folder. What we're going to do is, using the control button, we're going to click on the ones we want to copy. So this Maya Auto Control Rig folder, that image folder, or image file, and this Python file. We're going to copy it, and then we're going to go into our documents. And into our documents, we're going to find Maya. We're going to find the version year that you're using because you can have multiple years installed on your computer. I am demoing this in 2018 because that's where I'm going to do the, automa uh, the animation for the run cycle. And then here, we want to put it in scripts. You're going to paste them into here, and you'll see you have the Maya Auto Control Rig. You'll have that folder, you'll have the image folder, image file, and then the Python script. So with all of that, what we're going to do put that out of the way, is I'm going to close this Dropbox for now. We don't need it. And I am going to go ahead and here in Maya show you how to now put the files and set that plugin up. So the first thing we want to do is down here in the lower right hand corner, we have this little white kind of programming looking little button. It's got the little brackets on it. It'll open up your script editor. I'm going to go into edit and clear history. There we go. It helps us select the right one. Make sure we're on the Python tab. And what we're going to do is this Python file right here. All we have to do is click on it, drag and drop it right into here. Oops, don't want to do all three of those. I just want the one and drop that into there. And it's a very small, short script, just directing Maya where to look for that file folder that we just placed into the scripts. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight it. So we're going to just do a kind of a, a selection and try that again. Okay. Let me go ahead and make sure that that doesn't look like everything we need. Let me go ahead and clear them all. Try this again. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I've got it there. I'm just going to go ahead and left click on it and drag it and drop it into my customs folder up here. And I'm going to go ahead and say it's a Python. All right, so as you can see, I already have it installed here. <laughs> Go ahead and delete that button real quick. I don't need two of these. So what you're going to end up with is you're going to have this little Python um, generic symbol here. So right-click on that and hit Edit. And now go to Shelves. Down here, kind of in the middle of this little pop-up, it says pythonfamily.png. That's where this image came from. We're going to change that. We want to go ahead and go to the File folder and go to our Documents into Maya, your version, into scripts, and then find that little button right there. And we say open. And it's going to pop up and there's your little button. And then right down here in the icon label, I'm just going to say what this is, Mixamo, so I know what it is. And I'm going to hit enter. It gives me a little words across the top now, so I've labeled it. And I'm going to hit close on this. I don't need this anymore. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and push the little button, test it, make sure it works. And we should end up with this little um, pop-up here. And this is uh, pretty simple for us to be able to use to rig our character. We can also import the animation from Mixamo. Uh, we can export things. We can batch it. And there's also this utilities. All right, so back on rig. I'm going to close this for right now. And what I want to do is go ahead and bring in one of our characters. So that character I downloaded earlier is this character right here. This is pretty much what the file, the file is going to look like for one of those characters. It's a 3D object. It's an FBX file. And what I'm going to do is a couple things here. Get this out of the way here too. 
All right, so first I want to go ahead and prepare my um, scene and get my project set up. So without uh, doing much else, I'm going to come up here to File, go to Project Window. I am going to say New. I'm going to call this Sophie Demo so I know what it is. I'm going to leave all of these default folders alone. And I'm going to put this into a folder where I don't know that I want it. I'm going to go to my computer, C drive in this case, my animation demos. And I'm going to put it right in here. I'm going to select this particular file folder and I'm going to say accept. So now my Sophie demo ended up in here. Okay. So what we need to do is we're going to import Sophie. So I'm going to leave her right here where she is. And once I do that, there'll be an FBX folder that actually shows up next to it. And so I'm going to go up to File. I am going to go to Import. Go to so this is right here. But by setting up our project, it's already put us into our scenes. That's where it's looking. I could have put uh, Sophie into there, but because I want to also have that separate folder, I am going to keep it outside my project for right now. I'm going to click on Sophie FBX and I'm going to click import. And there she is. I can hit six on my keyboard and you can see that our character is right there. Now there's a few issues with the texturing because when we import them in, they come in as a, uh, a fong, I believe. So we'll go find that in a minute. I'll show you how to fix that. Uh, because that has a lot to do with the way the hair and the eyelashes look when we render this image out. But first, I'm going to go ahead and finish talking about importing Sophie. Now, once we did that, you'll see here is that Sophie.fbm folder. I am going to double click on this and I'm going to select all of these images right here. And I'm going to copy them. And now I'm going to actually go into my demo down into source images and I'm going to paste those into here. Okay. We take a look at it. The fuse is the color here for the body and the skin color and the eyes it looks like and shoes. There's the glossy folder for it. There's a normal and a specular. And then we have a diffuse, which is another diffuse, which is for the hair. It looks like and a normal, which is supposed to also be for the hair, I presume. Okay, so we have that. One more thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and save what we have. File, save scene as. It's going to come back up. And because I kind of messed around with it, instead of going right into the scenes, I need to go down into the scenes. And I'm going to give this a, a name. I'm going to call this Sophie. And I'm going to call it basic. So I know that this is my basic file. This is my start point. So the T pose. I'm going to save it. Okay. Now, if I go back into my folders here, I take a look at my scenes. There is my Sophie basic and I have all of my source images in here. I'm going to leave this open for a minute because we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But first, let's go ahead and show you how easy it is to rig this character up. Over here in my outliner, I have the Mixamo hips that is part of this character. That's what I want to select. When I do that, you'll see that all of the fingertips kind of are selected and toes. If I clicked on joints right now, we can see that it's just a very generic, sort of a Maya-like um, control rig. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, with it selected, I'm going to come up in here and select this little button, the Mixamo button. This pops up. I'm going to say rig character. And with that done, there we go. We have a pretty decent rig. Now, if this character had uh, some uh, blend um, facial features, so some blend rigging for the face, so eyes, mouth, um, cheeks, things like that, we would have some additional controls right up in here. It automatically rigs that in. That's what I like about this. So it makes it a lot easier for the animating of this character. But some things that this one does come with, we go over here to channel box and select the hands. I like the fact that uh, this one has the ability to turn on your IKFK at both the feet and at the hands. 
And also, if I select the finger controls here, I can come over here and left or middle mouse button click and I can rotate it and I can rotate all those fingers at the same time. Helps me uh, more quickly animate and then I can just select individual fingers. So if I wanted to, I could just bring out one finger. So it's a lot easier. I can also do the same thing with the thumb and then I can come in here and individually select all of the joints with these controls and start to animate um, the finger, kind of fine tune it if I need to. Same with the hands and wrists. Has a nice easy controls to be able to grab the neck, the, hand, the head, the body. And then we have a root control right here, which doesn't, uh, doesn't have some other basic stuff because this character is pretty simple character. It's just a really the uh, skin and clothing. Not a lot else uh, comes with this one. But on Mixamo, there are some characters that have quite a few uh, more animations or more animation points like facial features and blends and things like that. Okay, so now um, what I want to do is go ahead and address the issue with the textures. Over here now, everything has gone away. Remember before you could see all of the um, clothing and stuff. It's all been wrapped up underneath the character. And then we have the controller selects. Uh, the bind joints and geo selects, but right under here under character, if I hit the little plus button, there's a mesh group and I can click on that. And in the mesh group, that is where all of the body and everything is located. Why do I want to do this? Let me address that first. Say I wanted to render this character out using the um, embedded Arnold here. If I go ahead and give it a light source, just a quick, easy dome, hit the play button up here for the rendering. We can see that if I take a look at this character, the hair doesn't look so great and the skin and the clothing is very reflective. You can see that the clothing reflects the light a lot more than it should. And the hair basically is the basic cardstock and the eyelashes are the same way. So let me go ahead and zoom in. Oh, we lost her. Zoom in on her face. All right, so you can see that this really is not individual eyelashes. This is basically the card. Um, so the polygon that the hair was placed onto, and it's um, basically a bunch of little squares. So we don't want that. So if I click here on the hair, you can see that. Zoom in here. And then if I do the same for the eyelashes, pretty much the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to address that by taking a look at all of the materials that are on this particular character, which aren't a lot. There's not a lot of texturing and everything as far as the material that's being used. In this case, you can go over here to attribute editor, right click on the little arrow and then take a look down here at body. So you can see it's a fong. And that's one of the reasons why everything's so reflective. We can do some things here and adjust it out. But what I'm wanting to do instead, um, because I'm also wanting to address some of the issues with the hair, is I'm just going to go ahead and convert this to an AI standard surface. Okay. And when I do that, um, I lose the um, diffuse color, so the coloring. But weirdly enough, the specular and other things stay. So if I went down here to geometry, you can see that the bump map or the normal map also stayed, but all I did was lose the diffuse. I can click on this little icon right here and this file folder will pop up, click on file and then click on the folder. And because I've dropped everything in the source images already, it just will take me right to the source images and I can select the diffuse. And again, here are the uh, UVs that were done for this particular character and everything's kind of flattened out into a 2D texture, click on it and give it a second. It should have reloaded. There we go. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and because I forgot to name it, so I'm going to go back to body and right click up here. It's just going to call this AI standard surface. I'm going to go ahead and call this material and body. Okay. And if I take a look at the clothes, the clothes have the same material on it, the sneakers, and so do her socks. So everything's been taken care of for the clothes because of that one UV. 
but the hair is different. The hair and eyelashes are together and they are on this particular object right here. Now, one of the things I notice is missing. So there's just the hair and there are a normal map. There is nothing else for this particular uh, part of this character. So what I want to do is put an opacity in here to help with the eyelashes kind of fix that up. Okay. But we'll take care of that here in a second. First, we're going to go ahead and apply the material. So I'm going to go to this and change it from a fong. I'm going to go to AI standard surface. I'm going to rename this. Okay. And come back in here and now redirect it into the file for the hair, which is this diffuse one right here. And let's say open. And now everything's on there. You can see that the eyelashes are back on this particular one. And again, you can really see kind of how this works. Here are the individual textures. And I'm going to come in here. So if I double click on this image, you can see that there's the hair. And there's this background is um, white on here, but it's actually being red black. So that's what's being seen here. We see the black squares and we see the individual hairs. Maya doesn't know what are supposed to be shown and what isn't supposed to be shown, so it shows everything. But we can create an opacity map just from this particular diffuse that we have right here and make it so that these look like individuals. Okay, so we're going to do that real quick. I am going to open up Photoshop. I should have had it open already. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. While that's opening, it should just take a minute or so. Um, a few other things about the character and the rigging. We can take a little bit more look at the rigging. Um, down here on the feet again, on these controllers here, these little triangles allow us to go ahead and select them. And back in the channel box, we can also turn on IK, FK. Uh, there's also some rotations that we can do uh, with the foot. So we can rotate it in the X, Y, and Z. Uh, some controllers, um, depending on how detailed now there it is. So if we select the box around the feet down here, we can do things like toe roll. Um, oh, there's even a hip pivot. So quite a few controls that we can uh, get into. Like toe tab again, click on the word, middle mouse button, click back in the scene, and we can just kind of come in here and again mess around a little bit with some of the foot and hip controls that this particular character has, which will definitely help us uh, in creating a run cycle later on. All right, so Photoshop should be up. Okay, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new um, new project, and I'm going to use my custom 20, 20 by 2048 by 2048. This is what I usually use for my UVing. I'm going to go ahead and call this Sophie Hair um, Opacity. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 300. RGB color is fine. Background contents, I'm going to pick black, save myself the trouble, go ahead and say OK, and now it pops up black. If it came in white on you, you didn't uh, do that, you can always click on the background, hold Alt and Backspace as long as you have the color black over here, and it should change to the opposite color. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that image that we had already for the hair, drag it into here, and drop it. Okay, click back in here, hit enter, set it. And this is just a really quick, simple process. So whatever um, software you're using, it probably has something similar. All we're gonna do is we're gonna use a filter and I'm gonna come in here and use the camera raw filter. Give it a second to pop up and it brings this up. And what all I wanna, all I wanna do is just take out the color. I just wanna turn these all into white. So I'm going to come over here, pull my exposure all the way over. Didn't quite get everything, so I'm going to keep come on, keep playing with the, the buttons here until I get everything. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag everything over. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm going to hit OK. There it is. So now the black, we're going to tell Maya don't read it. It should be see-through and the white is where the texture is going to be 
and that's what we wanted to see. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to save this right back in here into my source images. I'm going to make this a PNG. And I am just going to call this Sophie Hair Opacity. That'll be fine. I know exactly what it is. Now I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to say OK. All right. So now that we've got that made, I'm going to go ahead and close Photoshop. Um, you know, I'm going to save it as a PSD, just in case I need to come back to it. Shouldn't need to, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so now I've got an opacity that I can use to help fix this hair. Right up here, we want to go into our hyper shader. Right here are the materials we currently have for this project. I am going to middle mouse button click and drag the one that says M hair down into here. I'm going to click on it and I just want to see the inputs. So I'm going to click on this one here. This is inputs and outputs. This is outputs only. And this is useful. This clears your setup in here. So if you, this popped in here with something in the middle of it, you can just uh, click this little button right here and it erases it. It doesn't get rid of it. It just erases it from your workspace. All right. So click on the inputs and these are my bump maps. So my normal maps, these are the textures that have been applied to the hair. So the color and right in here is one that says, let me go ahead and expand this all the way up, says opacity right down here. Okay. So that's what we want to apply. So pretty simple and easy thing to do. We're going to come over here to 2d textures. We're going to select 2d textures. I'm going to click on the one that says file. Pull this over a little closer, just housekeeping thing. All right. So now I'm going to click on that and over here, there's a little file folder. You should see it um, hopefully right above this video. So I'm not blocking things for you. And then right here, I'm going to click on the little file folder. And I am going to go find my one that says Sophie. Hmm. Source images, see animation demos. Did I not put that in the right spot? Let me see. No, no I don't see it over there. All right. Good thing I saved that. Let me go ahead and find it real quick and see where I placed it. Give me just a minute. My guess is that it probably didn't go where I thought it was going to go. Let's see here. And that's what happens when you have too many files open up stuff. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. Went into the wrong folder. All right, so the other thing is make sure you set, and it's a lesson right there, I embarrass myself here. Make sure you come in and you set your project to the correct folder. And now that I have my Sophie Opacity here, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go ahead and say open. And it basically applied that to this, but we haven't connected it yet. So we want to take the out color, bring it down here to opacity and just connect that in. All right. So I'm going to pull this over out of the way and let's see what we've got so far. Let's see what else, if we have to do a little bit more tweaking on this. All right. looks like we're going to have to do just a little bit of tweaking on it. My first thought is that um, we may need to go ahead and allow some uh, opaqueness to happen inside of Arnold. So I'm going to close this for a second. Zoom in a little closer. Now we probably won't see a change here, but we're going to see it in our render. So I'm going to select eyelashes or hair. It doesn't matter because it's the same material. And well, actually, we need to do it for both. Never mind. So we're going to go ahead and go to Attribute Editor right here on the side, the Attribute Editor. And we want both the eyelash shape and we're going to also want the eyelash shape uh, original or, or, yeah, whatever the org is. All right. So now hit the Arnold down and we're going to unclick that. And we're going to un go to the next tab and we're going to unclick Opaque on this one as well. So Opaque for both of those. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing for the hair. I'm going to come in here to the hair shape, uncheck that, and then we're going to go to the hair shape. The other one, uncheck that. And let's render this real quick and see if that made a difference. Oh my goodness, I'm zooming in so close, so close. And there you have it. Give it a second to render. And we should have some eyelashes. There we have it. We have eyelashes and we have some hair. It no longer looks like a bunch of polygons that are kind of stuck together pretending to be hair. Uh, this is um, okay. I see some issues going along here in the hairline, but that is not from this. Okay, so um, what that is, it looks like it's probably, if I were to turn the hair off, I could probably see that on the head itself, there is probably some shading and stuff that's happening on the head. But for this demo, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you and try to keep this right around 30 minutes, not go too long. So now we have our character all saved and set up. So I'm going to go ahead and save it on Control S or go up to File and hit the Save button. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, please uh, shoot them to me down in the bottom underneath the video. I will try to get back to them and answer them on YouTube as much as possible. And please subscribe to my channel, Paul Fritz Animation so I can uh, keep making these videos for you. Anyway, thank you again, and have a good, uh, good day.